But some say the problem with 5G isn't a potential spying and competition by China, but the potential adverse health effects of 5G itself. Arthur Furstenberg is an author and health advocate based in New Mexico. He says that 5G comes with a host of problems and will bring dangerous radiation into homes across the world. He spoke with WBAI earlier Wednesday. Radio frequency radiation is harmful to life. And 4G, 3G, and 2G, um, all the digital technologies especially, have been causing a lot of problems for health and the environment. The difference with 5G is that it will be beam forming, which means instead of a single antenna element in, in your phone communicating with a single antenna element on a cell tower somewhere, your phone will have an array of, say, uh, eight or 16 antennas, all working together to form a focused beam, which will be, which will be aimed at the nearest cell tower. We will find the cell tower, in turn, will have hundreds and sometimes even thousands of little antennas, tiny little millimeter-sized antennas, arranged in what they call a phased array, and forming individual beams that will be aimed at and track every user device. Your cell phone will aim a focus beam at the cell tower, the cell tower, which will no longer be a tower, it will be a small antenna on a lamppost outside your house or outside your neighbor's house. And it will be aiming very narrowly focused beams at all the user devices. Because the frequency is much higher, the purpose of going from 2G to 3G to 4G to 5G is to increase the speed and the bandwidth and the capability of all the user devices. So there's much more bandwidth available at much higher frequencies. And they're going to frequencies at millimeter-sized wavelengths. And these millimeter waves are don't go through solid objects. They're blocked by objects. They're blocked by trees. They're blocked by houses. They have to be very close to the user, at least where, when they're on land. They're launching space satellites, which will beam down also millimeter waves on top of us, but there's no objects in the way to block the signals. These millimeter waves are going to be blasted, which means your phone, which previously emitted a maximum power when you were out of range of most cell towers of up to 2 watts. The the new FCC rules now permit user devices in the millimeter wave range to emit up to 20 watts. That's 10 times more radiation. These cell towers, which even large cell towers, used to be no more than 5, 10,000 watts, even from very large cell towers. These antennas on lampposts outside people's bedroom windows, according to the new FCC rules, are allowed to broadcast, and I believe the figure was 30,000 watts per 100 megahertz of spectrum, an enormous amount of radiation. The theory behind it, according to the FCC and the industry, is that millimeter waves do not penetrate far into your body, that all the radiation is absorbed in the superficial layers of your skin, so that... (coughs) you're still not receiving a very large dose of radiation. But your skin absorbs it all. So there are various studies that have come out analyzing what's going to happen and predicting actual skin burns and resonant absorption by the cornea of your eye and resonant absorption by millimeter-sized creatures such as insects, which are all already under dire threat around the world. So, so, so the difference, that, that's in a nutshell, Um, why we have 5G and what the difference is between it and previous generations of wireless. Is there uh, expected uh, physical health problems? The the government says no. There are millions of people. If go by the government surveys, approximately 3 to 5, there's a Taiwanese study, 13%. It's harming everybody in general. It's harming the environment in general. And increasing numbers of people are being thrown over the edge and being so severely injured that they're essentially outcasts from society and cannot be in areas where wireless technology works anymore. The first symptom usually is sleep disorder, insomnia, inability to sleep. You get radiated and you can't sleep. This happens uh, when there's a cell tower near people's houses. You can't think properly. You get dizzy. You get nauseous. You get various pains throughout your body. A lot of people get chest pain, heart arrhythmias, People are having strokes and heart attacks, and and, uh, this gets very serious. 
What are some, can it be a carcinogenic? Uh, what other illnesses could it cause in the long term? There are upwards of 10,000, and, and my estimate is closer to 30,000, but conservatively, there are more than 10,000 peer-reviewed studies showing serious harm in the way of not only heart disease, cancer, diabetes, in children, ADHD, autism. I know autism has, has been in the news as to whether vaccines cause it, but uh, also RF radiation. DNA damage, nervous system disorders, Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, heart arrhythmias, and then there have been a, a huge number of studies on wildlife, bird reproduction, laboratory studies on fruit flies interfering with reproduction, interference with bird migration, um, forest die-off in, in, in areas of, uh, that are directly exposed to, to, to high radiation. Um, we have studied, I, I have something like 10,000 studies in my house. That's why I'm saying it's a very conservative number. It's been said, ionizing radiation, like from radioactive elements, radium and things like that, now that actually can disrupt DNA, but this is on the other end of the spectrum. There are other mechanisms for cancer. That has been shown experimentally. The other problem with, with cancer is that genetic mutations are not the only cause of cancer. External electromagnetic fields do is they interfere with electron transport in the mitochondria of every cell. What this does is that the electrons that are generated by the digestion of your food and the creation of ATP has to combine with the oxygen we breathe. And, and if you interfere with electron transport by, with an external electric field, in essence, you slow down metabolism and you induce oxygen starvation. And under conditions of, of oxygen starvation, cancer cells thrive. Well, they're going to launch this. They're, gonna, they're not listening to us. What do you think should be done at this point? Number one, I'm the administrator for an international appeal to stop 5G on Earth and in space. Just by word of mouth, we have almost 100,000 signatures from at least 170 countries on, around the world, including about 1,100 environmental organizations, thousands of scientists and doctors have signed it. And we intend to get as many signatures as we can, and at some point in the not-too-distant future, we're going to present this to all of the world's governments formally. Um, the other thing that we are doing here where I live in New Mexico is we have a lawsuit that we filed in December asking a court to declare that the laws that are streamlining 5G and antennas on the sidewalks, which is going to be in front of every third to fifth house in every city in the world, we have a lawsuit um, asking the court to declare that these laws violate the Constitution. They, they violate due process. They violate free speech because the Section 704 of the Telecommunications Act prohibits your local government from regulating RF radiation on the basis of health and environment. It, it violates the right to petition the government for redress of grievances. People who are being, being driven out of their homes and made homeless by this technology, <coughs> it's a takings without um, just compensation. So this violates the first, fifth, and fourteenth amendments of the Constitution. RF radiation is harmful. Until a couple of decades ago, people did not put open sources of microwave radiation next to their brains, and um, it's not a good thing to do. A lot of people do not want antennas in their communities, but they want their cell phones, and you can't have one without the other. So we, we've got to wean ourselves off as a society of these user devices. It's not a question anymore of we can have few of them. Every single person in the world has now got them. Every single person in the world now wants to stream video on their cell phones, and this cannot be done without vastly increasing the infrastructure which people don't want. So we've got to re-examine this. Arthur Furstenberg is an author and health advocate based in New Mexico.